Welcome to the North Point Guys podcast. My name is Michael Scott. And I'm Josiah Smith. We're so glad you're with us here today. And uh, we're joined by what I, here's how I yeah. g- I gave her a title. Yeah, okay? you gave her, so she has a new title. She is our campus prayer instigator. That is quite campus. a title. I'm uh, curious to hear why. It's accurate. It's accurate. Yeah. We'll talk about it in a little bit. Okay. But uh, let's welcome Livia Timorason. How did I do? Hey guys, that was great. <laughs> yeah, good job. All right, it, was fine, it was fine. Livia, thanks so, for joining us today. Thank you for having me. Yeah. So tell us a little bit about yourself. We'll get into the life story here in a second, but what year you are, what are you studying, or even where you're from, and then we can dive into sure, that. Sure. Awesome. Well, my name is Livia Timorason, and I am from Indonesia, and I'm on my sophomore year, so second semester. It feels like it went best so fast right. and yes absolutely so i am also um i'm still praying about like the second major but i'm looking at evangelism right now as yes. we have the new program we do in north new point evangelism yeah. program that's awesome so mm, nope let's save that all right let's talk about being a prayer instigator, prayer so, instigator. we're just uh, getting actually now by the time this podcast airs this will this will be long over and gone, but, but we'll, we're probably um, getting ready for the next one. Yeah. Oh. So, yeah. all right, that's true. So w- what's happening Friday, uh, 6 PM to 6 PM and how that start. Share yes. Yeah. So we it. are doing a 24 hour burn yes. prayer and worship and everything else in between. And, um, I just love like how we get to just minister to God's heart as he like ministers to ours and just encountering him in the presence of that our little, you know, prayer chapel, and it's just yeah. so sacred in there. And just, um, I think it'll be a really good time of just like starting off the semester right and in prayer and worship. And last year we did it um, where it's we did it overnight, mm-hmm. twelve hours, mm-hmm. Mm-hmm. and it was awesome. Like seeing the faculty, the staff, the students lead and interact and just pray together, come together. And I thought that really just was a highlight for me as well. Yeah. Well, Absolutely. I'm so glad. Yeah. Lily came and said, can we do this again, but double it? So, yeah. wow. Yes. So well, here's. And, and what's cool, you know, I don't want to overlook this. Olivia is a student. Yeah. A student initiated 24 hour prayer. Absolutely. I mean, the campus pastor here did not say. We will now be doing 24 this, hour Liz, Livia, you're, you're over this. This it's was like, not a mandate. No, no this was, the students are absolutely. the ones leading this. And, yeah. and just like Dr. Gallagher, you know, taught us I think the greatest revivals in North Point and Zion's history started with, with the students. students. Yeah. Amen. Yeah. So my question, Livia, and we're, we're going to ask you a few stories about salvation, stuff like that, but I'm just curious. So like a 24 hour prayer burn, um, I, I don't know that I've met too many people that are as passionate about prayer as you are, or maybe I want to say as joyful about prayer as you are. Yeah. Okay. Sure. And I, I do believe some people uh, are gifted with intercession. They're gifted with that prayer ministry. Uh, but obviously all of us pray. All of us are called to prayer. It's how we commune with our Father. But, um, you know, is doing it for long periods of time is super intimidating for a lot of people. Or, you know, I think some people, they get done with five minutes and be like, this is I, what am I doing now? Or, do yeah, say? like yeah. it seems boring. So, like, how did that happen for you, where prayer became a joy, and where you want to do these prayer initiatives? Mm, I think honestly, the moment that I knew that, wow, there's a God that speaks, mm. was when I was like, okay, prayer is actually fun, you know, because <laughs> I would. Uh, you know, back home, I ride a scooter everywhere and it would take me like 30 minutes in each drive. And like, you know, those 30 minutes on a scooter in traffic, yeah. hot or cold. And it's just like, those were the moments that was my prayer closet. And mm-hmm. I think just literally um, experiencing God's like presence and just knowing that, okay, when we're praying, we're not just like saying words and like, oh, how, how I'm feeling and yeah. how's my day going? But it's more like hearing him speak and hearing, okay, like, God, what do you want to say? Like, and we get to dream with him together. We get to, you know, offer Thanksgiving and worship and also just, yeah, in the stillness and like hearing. And I think being um, part of YWAM was 
and like the mission initiatives back home like has really opened my eyes to like okay there's so many ways to pray yeah. it's not just one form sitting yeah. down closing your eyes but there's you know different dynamics we can do and different um yeah expressions of prayer so yeah. i think that really has just ignited the joy and actually like yeah a lot of my encounters with god has been in those like worship nights and prayer times and so it's been life-changing yeah that's awesome well and there's so much there but like mm-hmm. i love how you mentioned well first of all that you learned how to pray while riding a scooter through the city yeah uh, because that would not fit within some of our paradigms of prayer you know but the idea yeah, the idea that maybe maybe the box that we put prayer in is too mm-hmm. small if communicating with our creator God is what prayer is, mm-hmm. yeah, maybe there are a lot of different ways to do that. And if I was driving a scooter in a busy city in Indonesia, I would probably be praying too. My prayer would <laughs> yeah. be different. Yes. Oh, help, God. Yes. Yeah, <laughs> yeah, It'd be a lot sure. of help, 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 yes. help, help. <laughs> yes. um, yeah, a little help and honking and yeah. things like that. Yeah. Yeah. Lord, yeah. forgive them. Yeah. Forgive them, Lord. <laughs> Forgive them. Yeah, that's true. That's true. Um but yeah, so I like I like that maybe we need to expand our idea of prayer because I know for me even um, I think the times I pray the best, so to speak, when I feel like I'm communicating with God the most, mm-hmm. is when I'm taking walks. Mm. You know, yeah. and I have I have I still try to be a you know kneel on the floor, or lay on the floor, or do something for extended periods of time, uh, but that is always more difficult for me, and uh, so it's it's nice to have like that permission or understand that like okay like prayers communication with god there's a lot of ways i can do this i can walk with god i can ride a scooter with god i can Mm -hmm. you know uh, and honestly you said this too dreaming with god Mm -hmm. i found through the years that that is probably one of my favorite uh, prayer times i guess is times when i'm dreaming with god and like you know maybe i write down an idea or i'm just talking about something and he drops an idea in my heart um such great moments you know so I guess Disney would call that visioneering, right? Oh, I see what you did. Ah, ah. I think so. My guy. <laughs> My guy. So, yeah. So, all right, well, let's let's get back to this then. How did you come to know Jesus? So, I was blessed to grow up in a Christian home, although um, most of Indonesia is Muslim, and, um, yeah, we're the largest Muslim country in the world. Um, mm. But, yeah, so grew up in a Christian home, went to Christian schools, I probably prayed the first prayer when I was five, you know, like, God, I give me my heart as little kids. Mm -hmm. Um, So I feel like I feel like that was genuine and it was, you know, accepted. Sure. (laughs) But, um, you know, as time goes by, like in um, teenage years, like 15, you know, wondering again, like, okay, is God real? Is he what, what is he and everything? And then was when I, you know, just encountered God in a small way it, on a scooter. Again, on these scooter, scooter moments, man. man. An anointed that's scooter. Anoint- yeah, that's what I was going to say. Anointed and actually, scooter. actually, my prayer was, God, help. <laughs> I was so right. scared. Yeah. Um, and then God answered the prayer. Like, he um, made it, a, like, made a way for me to, like, cross the road-ish. Hmm. And then I was like, okay, he's real. So... <laughs> Yay. He, um, he parted the traffic. Yes. <laughs> like, no joke. Yes. Wow. And it was just like a sign for me. And then since then, like going to a new community and just how like, you know, feeling in God's presence and the Holy Spirit, I was like, wow, this is insane. So yeah. I w- at 15, it was when I was like, okay, I'm following Jesus, no turning back. And then I gave up like cheating on tests or like, you know, yeah. doing these all like minor sin that we think um but i was like okay it's not worth it like Mm. nothing Mm. that i not like nothing bad i do is worth it yeah of like you know that relationship with god yeah so yeah i would say since 15 i've been just like yeah committed and running forward by his grace that's awesome (laughs) oh man and you mentioned earlier you mentioned why wham tell us what that is and how did you how did you get there and what'd you do? Yeah, so um, YWAM is Youth with a Mission. It's a global organization, interdenominational, and they focus on like training and discipleship programs and a lot of that. So I joined one in 2019, um, which was 
a whole like God process too, like God provided, you know, testing of the faith and everything to go there. And then, um, yeah, we're there for six months, do like training and they also like partner with missions trips and it was a lot of fun, but yeah. So then that was like, we did, I did my first 24 hour burn Ah, with my lamb and I was like, this is so fun. And it was cool. Like seeing friends lead the sessions and, um, staff, but also just like, yeah, a lot of the dynamics was really cool in Amsterdam. So, yeah. So you, what, you were six months in Amsterdam. That's where you trained three months in Amsterdam and then three months somewhere else. Yes. We went to the Philippines and Thailand. Yeah. Okay. Wow. That's awesome. Mm -hmm. And here you are at North Point. So how did that happen? Yeah. Yeah. That's I feel like that's a big jump yeah. Yeah, from all right, Indonesia, YWAM, and North Point. Exactly. So I'm excited to hear this. Yes. So it's crazy because it's like God just knows like how to transition like me and my life. It's like I went first to a international community to like, you know, practice with the whole like English language and worship okay. and sermons, you know. And then um then went to YWAM with like more even longer exposures to like full you know English and like God's presence I mean in a sense and then actually I was in the Philippines with my trip okay with my team and this was 2020 um my pastor texted me so my pastor's from Rhode Island but he's a missionary in Indonesia and he basically texted me like hey there's this four-year scholarship at a bible college in boston yeah (laughs) what do you think and i was like what this is huge like i I never thought of you know this because one i never thought of going to bible college because i hated reading and i was like never am i going to bible college you know if you asked me 10 years ago i would not say yes and then two, I always dreamed to go to America. Like hmm. I even like some when I was working and so when people like gave me a tip in dollars, I was like, I'm going to keep this because <laughs> I'm going there. Wow. And so it was just insane, like two, you know, different dynamics. But at the same time, um, since like a few months before my pastor texted me, I, I started like really wanting to learn about the Bible and I, mm. you can't ask my mom, you can't ask my family. Like I hate reading <laughs> to the core and I would not like, I didn't understand a lot about like reading the Bible, and, but like that moment, it's like this veil is like open and it was mm. like, oh wow, this is interesting, you know? And wow. just yeah. started reading a little, not a much. <laughs> um, and I was just very interested in like learning the Bible. And so when this came up and I was like, wow, like Bible college, like, America? What? Yeah. Like, yeah. it sounds so good. Yeah. And um, applied and got accepted with the full scholarship. And that's the only reason I'm that's here amazing. today. Yeah. So, but it also took God another year because of COVID for me to get to America. Yeah. Because I started 2021. Well, we're glad you're here. Yeah. Absolutely. Thank so, you. since being here with classes, is there anything that has really stood out that you say is one of the things that you did not know about the Bible before that now you're like, Oh, that that was pretty cool. I think everything about the Bible. (laughs) I I do especially love our old Testament classes Mm. and, um, just how like our professor talks about the judges. And I was like, what? That's insane. Like how God uses people, you know? Yes. And, um, I really love a lot of the different, I mean, all our professors are amazing yeah, and are. so genuine. So yeah. like they care about, about us deeply, but they also like read the Bible in Hebrew. So it's like, <laughs> what? Yep. Yep. <laughs> are there, I mean, like you mentioned, all of our professors are amazing. Are there any in particular that have really impacted you and now your year and a half, almost two years here at the school? Like give them a little shout out. Yeah. Okay. I mean, it's hard cause, cause you know, I don't want to, you know, favorite um, they're all great so yes, all great. let's make it clear olivia great. loves all the professors all the professors all the professors if you are not listed at this time <laughs> but don't, yes. don't be offended. you had to mm. give a shout out i definitely shout out dr richie um just on how like 
he yeah like his mind amazes me but also like his passion and yeah his heart for students he's like yes mm. i bring you guys to home you know and just how like that i think it was really amazing and i mean dr crabtree he's amazing as well just how yeah. like he talks bible like a storyteller yeah. you know and it's mm -hmm. like a story wow like so detailed but amazing yeah. So I definitely appreciate them. And I mean, Professor Hodge, like, Here she goes. you she know, goes moves with <laughs> the Holy Spirit yeah. Yeah. and just so good. So that's awesome. Yeah. I think, yeah, I think one of the great things about Bible college too, and maybe you've already experienced this or you will be experiencing it. But I know for me, I grew up reading the Bible. I grew up in church, all that. But I don't know that the Bible ever really made sense as a cohesive book right. to me until oh, yeah. uh, really after Bible college, yeah. so having taken all those classes, the Bible chronology, actually the Old Testament too, um, like the timeline of it. And right now I'm reading through the Bible chronologically, which is cool. And, you're, and you'll read one passage and it'll skip to the next. So like, oh, that happened at the same time. But I think that's a great thing about taking classes is really seeing how the Bible fits together. And it really tells an amazing story, mm -hmm. you know? Yeah. yeah. I agree. Yeah. So... What about the community that you have found on campus? Mm. I mean, if you see Olivia, she's always with friends. She's, True. She's always smiling. True. And so tell us about, you know, the friendships that you made here and, and what the community has meant to you here at North Point. Mm. And I think that's been just so like sweet and I've seen it I, just looking back at like the last semester, like I just sense you know, there was just great unity within yeah. like student body mm -hmm. and different yeah. classes were just very like much united. And I think definitely like seeing the friendships and even like, I guess relationships with faculty and staff as well has been real sweet because mm. not only that we are, we get like peers um, that we can connect with and walk together and you know pray in hard things and yeah. rejoice in like victories and breakthroughs um in the dorms and you know those moments just is so sweet but um seeing just how intentional like staff and faculty have been and like pouring into students and i've just been so honored to yeah receive and kind of like soak all the you know, encouragement and so that we can continue to encourage each other. Yeah. And that's so. what makes North Point a special place. Right. Really yeah. is that, is that togetherness. And, you know, I, I agree. We're just in a place where I feel like there's a lot of unity mm -hmm. and that gets me excited because, um, you know, I think God blesses unity. That's where right. his anointing rests yes. and his blessing. And so, yeah. Uh, I think as we go through this semester and we seek his face in prayer and fasting and reading of the word, mm -hmm. like that we can anticipate knowing him in a great way and uh, miracles, really, Absolutely. Yeah. this semester. Amen. So I'm pumped for that. Absolutely. Yeah, it's going to be good. Something else that we're doing, you, you mentioned your pastor, uh, Don Butera, right? Mm -hmm. So uh, we're taking a trip. Why don't you tell us a little bit about, about that? In May? Yeah. So... Um, it was crazy because everyone thinks I'm like the one who initiates it because I'm like from <laughs> Indonesia. I'm like, no, actually, <laughs> Pastor Josiah reached out. There, and there were a lot of connecting dot right, moments. Right. I yeah, think. Yeah, yeah. Yeah. And so um, this summer we are taking a team up to or to the other side of the world. Yes. Um, to Indonesia for two weeks. And we are going to be partnering with my local church and some other um, relationships. And so, yeah, we'll be working with Pastor Don Butera at ICCIFGF and how um, I'm really just so excited on this opportunity because I, when I left America, uh, Indonesia, I was like saying bye to my parents and family community for like, see you in four years. Oh, <laughs> yeah. It's like, yeah. it's so expensive to travel and I'm only here because like, you know, my church supported and, you know, mm -hmm. a lot of people um, sent me here yeah. basically. And, um, but when the opportunity came up and it's like exactly my t two years mm -hmm. being here and then not only like, do I get to get, go home and see like culture, family and everything, but um, just being able to bring a team of people from America, like to see them like actually minister to people yeah. and, you know, being able to have that like opportunity, I think is so cool that yeah. I get to be a part of that. 
Yeah. So. And trips are special too. Um, because so like, okay, so for you, you're going back home, a place where you know, you're familiar. And I, this is not true of you, but for a lot of people, I think home is where they settle in and get comfortable and aren't necessarily as intentional about uh, sharing Jesus or mm. that sort of thing. Um, so I think it's going to be neat to have people with you from the school going back to your hometown, zealous to preach the gospel, yes. you know, um, I th- yeah, I think that's exciting. And there's something happens when we, when we are, you know, we set a goal out maybe a year in advance, six months in advance, we're going here. And the only reason we're going is we want people to know Jesus. Like yeah. we're going to yeah. preach the gospel. Yeah. And, uh, so I, th- I think that's one of the reasons trips can be very impactful, uh, for the people of course who hear the gospel, but also for the people who are sharing it. Mm-hmm. Um, just cause they've been praying, they've been fasting, yeah. they've been building just up to this time. So yeah, we are, excited for that trip Mm -hmm. to bali yeah indonesia yeah so that's gonna be great definitely um so that's so cool (laughs) yeah yeah um yeah so is there is there anything that you're looking ahead now you're halfway through so you got time but is there anything that god's put in your heart that you're just excited for about the future whether it's a ministry that you feel god wants you to do or something that's happening yeah yeah well i know I haven't had like a specific place. I don't know a specific like ministry with a title, you mm-hmm. know, but yeah. hence the earlier title given. Let's go. I know there's something with prayer Absolutely. and intercession. Absolutely. Um, I know God's like just putting on my heart for like missions and whether it be like connecting missions, like movements or organizations. Yeah. Um, I definitely see myself working with like international, yeah. um, not just like to Indonesians or not just to Americans. So, or English speaking people. Um, cause yeah, I feel like God just has more than just one thing. So, mm-hmm. um, still praying about it, but I do have a heart for, um, you know, the loss and missions yeah. and just getting to see people, you know, actually see Jesus and encounter him. So yeah, that's just, yeah, big in my heart. Yeah. And you know, I mentioned earlier how prayer and intercession is a calling stuff, but there's, there's been people throughout history and I don't know that I can quote all the facts, but I, I believe like every great move of God, uh, well, one, it started with prayer, but mm-hmm. even, you know, you talk about Billy Graham, who is known as the greatest evangelist of all time, you know, uh, he had, he had someone who would go before him and lock himself in a hotel room and pray for days uh-huh. before Billy Graham ever got there. Right. And, you know, and I think we see that throughout history and different revivals and stuff that people going before and praying and, you know, so even this, this 24 hour burn that we're doing, um, other, th- other t- things that I'm sure you will instigate and other people will instigate, uh, that, that's, that is God you know, putting that on your heart and he's wanting to draw people closer to himself. So a matter of fact, there's a, a quote, I don't remember who said it, but he said, whenever God sets out to do a great work, he first sets his people to pray. Mm. Mm. Amen. Yeah. So if God's setting us to pray, I think we can anticipate that he wants to do a great work. Mm-hmm. That's, That's good. good. Yeah, yeah. Mm, we're preaching now. Let's yeah. go. <laughs> <laughs> a little shout out to Hannah Cruz as well. She was uh, yeah um, rocking it when the last prayers time. And we'll call her a missions instigator. There you go. Yeah, yes. maybe we'll have her on the podcast. Yeah, so she's got a bunch of instigators. So. <laughs> Absolutely. <laughs> what we need? Yeah. Instigator. Well, okay, Livia. So before we wrap up, we've talked a lot about some you know, missions, Indonesia, prayer, things like that. But give us something, give it like if someone were to not know Livia mm. and say, I want to know who Livia is. Yeah. What three words would you use to describe Livia? Great question. Tomorrow. So great question. Wow. Yeah. Three words, only mm. three, three. Yeah. This is on the spot. So you might come back later it and be like, I would have chosen three spot. different, but <laughs> that's okay. <laughs> and I probably will say that. Um, I can say it's like, relax chill yeah, you know because yeah, i'm yeah, like yeah. mellow tone sure yeah um and spontaneous spontaneous like okay yeah Some relaxed yeah. and spontaneous i'm there, like yeah. oh yeah let's do something yeah. um and lastly is um connect I don't know why that comes Sure. Yeah. I can, I can see that. Yeah, yeah, actually. Yeah, yeah, yeah. For sure. We're connecting. Yeah. Yeah. A, a bridge builder. 
Yeah. I like that. Uh, a link yeah. maker. And I would include prayer in that because I she's connecting so. to God, <laughs> connecting Come others. To- That's true. Come That's on. true. Yeah. Okay. And if you had to eat a taco. Yes. Where would you want it to be from? Fantastic question. From? Yeah. Or, or what do you want on it? Yeah, Ooh. so like let's say yeah, you you need a taco. Yeah. You need it. Which where are you going to go do. and how, <laughs> and, how, and how are you going to order it? Okay. I am going to order a fish taco. Oh. Cuz okay. Baja tacos are just Yeah. The best. As long as the sauce is right. Those yes. are, yes. those are yeah. really good. Yeah, you got to have a good sauce. Lots of guac and yes. everything, okay. you know. Yeah. Oh, you're preaching. <laughs> where where yes. are you going to go? Taco Bell. I don't know if they have fish. No, no, probably no. not. <laughs> I don't know if I would trust a fish taco from Taco Bell. <laughs> That'd be sketchy. Yikes. That'd be a little sketchy. Yes. I don't know. We. I remember we went to one place last semester or last year, and it was really good, but I don't know where that have is. Have you had Barrio yeah. Taco just no. right across the river? No. They would have fish tacos, yeah. Yeah. Okay. I'm, I'm a big Barrio good? fan. Oh, yeah. Okay. And there's yeah. Taco Lupita down the yeah. street, too. I don't taco know. I assume they do fish tacos. Yeah. They're pretty legit. I think they do cow tongue as well. Cow so, tongue, so they're I like went authentic. to order it and they were out. <laughs> yeah, they were out. Those maybe that, cows. Maybe that, <laughs> so many cow tongues. Anyway. I just picture so a field of cows <laughs> and it's just quiet because they can't moo. Oh, no. Wow, you're oh, making no. this really, really sad. Move. This is like Bambi. <laughs> <laughs> That's hilarious. Okay. Well, Olivia, we're really grateful that you came today Absolutely. just to share. And uh, since you're the prayer instigator, yeah. why don't you pray us out? And uh, why don't you pray just kind of for the passion of your heart, for people to know Christ, to draw near to God. And let's just pray that out. Mm -hmm. Yeah, absolutely. Yes. All right. Jesus, we thank you so much for um, everyone who's watching here. Lord, I thank you um, for North Point and the North Point guys as well. Lord, I pray that you would bless anyone who's hearing this and watching this, Lord, that they would also encounter your presence, Lord, that your fire would fall on them, that they would know that they um, are loved and they are called by your name, Lord. And I thank you that, um, yeah, you're a faithful one. And I do pray that you would, um, yeah, instill in them endurance, Lord. And I thank you for um, everything that you're doing in and through us, Lord, and, and through this person as well. And we bless your name and we love you jesus in your name amen 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 Amen. well olivia thank you so much for joining us thank you i mean this is fun it has been thanks for bringing the prayer instigator and since we (laughs) talked about indonesia too uh if you're watching this you would want to support one of our students going to indonesia maybe we can drop a link down here too where you can uh, if you'd like to donate uh, praise report. One of our one of our students already has probably seventy five percent of his funds wow. donated, which was a which is he came into my office and he's like, uh, that number is that an extra zero? Are you sure it's that? And so I called our finance person and said, hey, is this legit? They're like, it's legit. So wow. God is providing. Wow. But if you'd like to be a part of that provision as well, we'd welcome you to do that. So yeah. yeah, amen. So thanks for joining us here on the North Point Guys podcast. If you haven't already, go back and check out some episodes. Check it out. Absolutely. And this is just another one. So thank you again, Livia. And uh, make sure you check us out. If you may be listening on Apple Podcasts or Spotify, yep. maybe you're watching on YouTube. If you're doing one or the other, you can check out the other. There we go. Why not? We like, go. subscribe, all those good things. Or go to our Instagram, The North Point Guys, or check out North Point Bible College, Facebook, Instagram, you know, our website, northpoint.edu. All the places. Um, you know, as always, our podcast is magnificently produced by the amazing Matt Caforio. So a huge shout out to him. And uh, we love you guys. Thanks for joining us. And we'll see you next time. Thank you.